Turn me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Won't keep you long. We're going to be in and out. Matthew chapter 25. Go down to verse 21. Matthew chapter 25. Go down to verse 21. Matthew chapter 25. I got to blow my nose here because y'all may be going when y'all were seeing. Matthew chapter 25, go down to verse 21. It said, his Lord said to him, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. And then it says, I will make thee ruler over many things. And then it says, now enter into thou joy. God says, I was faithful over a few things. Now I will make you master over many things. Then he says, enter into thou joy. How many of you want more from God? How many of you want more from God? You have something you've been asking God for. And the Bible says this. See, God says, if you want more, you have to do more. See, God is not complicated. We, we, we try to make God all mystical and magical and all that. And God said, if you want more, you have to do more. Because God is going to look at what are you doing with what you have right now? Uh, each most, Everybody walked in here tonight. What are you doing with your feet? Most of you have eyes, you have skin, you have breath. What are you doing with the gifts that God has given you? God, God gave some of you cars. What are you doing with the cars that God has given you? Because God gave you some of you, you good minds. You have a good resume. What are you using these things with? God says, I blessed you with little if you want much. Let me see you working that thing until you get what you asked for. So God says, if you want more, do more. Because faith without works is dead. Don't ask God for nothing if you don't want to work for it. God says, if you want to be blessed, let me see you working with what you have right now. So work with what God has given you. And you will have the blessings of Jabez. The prayer of Jabez simply says, Lord, increase my territory. Lord, give me more money. Lord, give me a bigger house. Lord, give me more children. Lord, give me a man. You've been asking God for stuff, but God says, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to watch for what you're doing with what you have right now. Everybody in here is blessed. There's not a person that's watching me that isn't blessed. Well, well I don't have a Mercedes. You still have transportation. Well, well I don't have a car. You still have the ability to take Uber. Well, 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 I don't have a job. Well, you still have a home. The thing is, God has given you stuff already. So God says, if you want more, master what you have already, and he can bless you with more. Next, turn with me, Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28 says this. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then God says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And then he says in verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've heard this most of my life since I was probably about 10 years old. I never really understood what it meant. But let's look at it. Let's break it down. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, come if you work hard. He says, all those of you who work hard, he says, I want you to come. He wasn't speaking this to the lazy person. He wasn't speaking this to the person that's laying down that's giving up on life. This is for the people that are working hard. The people who are, if you don't have a job, you're working hard and finding a job. I'm encouraged by Sister Jane. She said, well, I didn't get this job. I got another job. And you. She's working hard at finding a job. God says, come. He says, because I know that you work hard. I know that you're stressed out. I know that you don't have enough money to pay the bills. I know that when you go to the gas station, you, you zap your car sometimes and nothing comes out. He says, I know what you're going through. He says, you're stressed. 
you, 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 you're not working out. Some of the things that you thought that were going to be there aren't there. He says, come. And he said, if you come, he says, we're going to switch bags. He says, I'm going to make your burdens light. I want to make your burdens easy. So here's the thing. Depression, come. Uh, suicidal thoughts, come. Anxiety, come. Stress, come. Broken homes, come. Whatever you're going through, God says, come to me. And he said, you're working through that thing. He said, if you come to me, I will deliver you from the stresses that you're going through. When I was homeless, I told you this story, and it's funny. One of my friends, she watches sometimes, named Michelle. And she said, I, I hear about this homeless story almost every sermon. I said, keep listening. I'm going to keep talking about it. One of the things that kept me, that got me out of homelessness was that I was working two jobs. I told you I worked 16 hours a day when I was homeless. God says, if you work hard, he says, I will pull you out of that thing. So for some of you, the key now is work hard. If you got one job, if you can afford to, get two. If you in school, study hard. Whatever you're doing, work hard. And if you work hard, God can deliver you and pull you out of that thing. So some of you need to change your work ethic and learn that you have to work hard and God will give you rest. Matter of fact, next, turn to Isaiah 5 and 11. Isaiah 5 and 11. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 5 and 11. Isaiah, thank you, Jesus. 5 and 11. Some of you ain't going to like this, but here it is. Isaiah 5 and 11. It says, Woe unto them that get up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that they continue it tonight to the wine and the weed and the cocaine and the pills and the heroin or whatever your ministry, the lean, inflame them. And then it says, verse 12, and the harp, that means the music, and the music, and the tabret, and the pipe, and the wine, are all in their feast. They party in all day long, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither do they consider the operation of his hands. Verse 13, therefore my people are going into captivity, because they have no knowledge of the honorable men that have famished, and the multitude of their people have dried up with thirst. Verse 14, therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth of wide with measure and the glory of the multitude and their pump shall descend therein. Let me translate that. Weed smoking is very popular in this generation. Uh, getting drunk, uh, drinking your Patron, uh, drinking your tequila, whatever you into. These are very popular things. But the Bible says if that's your main ministry, you're going to focus so much on that that you forget about work. See, the thing is, I know people who smoke weed from 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 to 35. They smoke weed all these years. And while they were smoking, they were getting high, getting the munchies, going to sleep, get up, play video games, get high, get the munchies, go to sleep. Oh, get a little job, quit, get a little job, quit, get high. And it just became a cycle, a cycle, a cycle, a cycle. Next thing you know, they woke up and they're 35 years old. And they look in their rear view and they ain't done nothing. 20 years have passed by and all they did was get high, get some munchies, get something to eat, have a little sex here and there. And go to sleep. And they just kept doing, get a little job here, get a little job there, get a little job here. And they can't put nothing together because this weed is breaking up their continuity of thought. They can't put nothing together because they have too many interruptions. The Bible says wine is a mocker. Weed is a mocker. It's a trick of the enemy to distract you from your problems. See, the devil's so clever. He said, hey man, you don't like your life? Get high. You forget about it. You don't like your pain and your reality. Smoke some weed. Get a little drink. You'll forget about it. But the thing also is you forget about progress. You forget about your dreams. You forget about the plan that you had to get out of poverty. And you end up stuck in a rut. So you have to be careful of the enemy. Because it says here that they end up in captivity. What is captivity? Trapped. You watch your mother and father trapped. You watch your cousins trapped. You watch your siblings trapped and they can't get out of this thing. And the next thing you know, you fall right to the same trap. 
the Bible says you have to be careful for the enemy is tricky because Satan comes to steal your dreams. He comes to kill your future and he comes to destroy your hope. So you have to be careful, but I like smoking weed. I don't have a problem with you smoking weed. But if you have to smoke every day, you have a problem. What? What are you talking about? If you got to do it every day, it's now an addiction. If you can't go a day without doing it, now the enemy got you trapped because now you're going down here and you're spending $50 a day, $2,200 a month, $800 a month, going to weed that's going nowhere, burning a hole in your pocket. Meanwhile, the enemy getting richer off of you. Why are you talking about this? Because I've seen people fall into this trap. And I've watched whole generations. I watched the father do it. And then now watching his son follow the father. And he's doing it. And he's looking at the father. And the father didn't do nothing. And the son ain't doing nothing either. You have to break the cycle of generation curses. Be careful because the enemy is tricky. He's very clever. And he said, will my friends do it? Will my cousins do it? I can do it too. Remember, the Bible says, wide is the road that leads to destruction. So if this year, 2023, ask God to help you break the cycle that's taking you down a road that leads towards poverty. Everybody in this church should want to be wealthy, want to be prosperous. It's very hard to do it if you're intoxicated all the time. So let God clear your mind. Ask God to break you of that spirit that has you trapped in, and holding on to that thing. I, I know somebody that spends $10,000 a year of Patron. Be careful lest the enemy can trap you with this. So ask God to free you and to release you from that thing. Next turn me to Proverbs 15 and 19. Proverbs 15 and 19. Proverbs 15, thank you Jesus, and 19. Proverbs 15 and 19. And this is how we break the cycle of generation curses. The cycle of poverty, the cycle of constant baby daddy and baby mama and all this foolishness that we get trapped in because we get caught in the rut. Proverbs 15, 19, it says, The way of the lazy man is a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous man is made plain. The Living Bible Translation says this, A lazy fellow has trouble all of his life, but the good man's path is easier. So what does that mean to you and I? If you're lazy, your life will be full of pain. If you're lazy, you won't have the things that you need. If you're lazy, you won't have enough money to pay your bills. You got to have the hustle mentality. I got to work. 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 You got to work. Studying your word is work. Let God see you working and he can prosper you to take you where you want to be. God is not going to give you nothing that you can't take care of. But if he watches you work with the little things, he says, I can now trust her with that bigger car. I can trust her with her own apartment. I can trust him with, with his own wife. I can trust him with this college degree. God is watching to see what you do with what you have. But it starts with a work ethic. Never run from work. Be willing to work, and God will bless you and prosper in the way that you want to go. Next, turn me to Proverbs 21 and 5. Proverbs 21 and 5. We're going to read verses 5 through 7. Proverbs 21 and 5. Proverbs 21 and 5. It says, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty, only to one. I'm going to translate that. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro that leads them to death. Verse 7, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. Let me translate that. It says steady plotting brings prosperity, but hasty speculation leads towards poverty. I'm going to translate it. Then it says, verse 6, this honest game will never last, so why take the risk? Verse 7, because the wicked are unfair and their violence often boomerangs and it destroys them. Some people want to scam and get money. Some of y'all know scammers. 
Y'all know people that steal, scam, they got the credit card scam, they got the EBT scam, they got the debit card scam, they got all these scams going. And right now you look at them, they got nice cars, some of them wear the best and the finest clothes. But here's the thing, the Bible says that life will lead to poverty. Because here's what happened. Everything that goes up will come down. I grew up in the 80s. Compton was popping. 83, 84, 85. All the old school players watching me right now. It was going down. You had 15 year olds with $50,000 walking around Compton High School, driving around low lows and bouncing around and sounds in the trunk. And you had all that stuff. Where are they today? Dead, in prison, or locked up forever. Some of them are those homeless people you see on the street. They wasn't all crazy people in the crazy house. They ain't all crackheads. Some of them are people who, who was those high rollers back in the day. How do I know? I went back to my hood on 6th Avenue and 30th Street, and I saw them. I was like, wow. There's a brother walking around over there where I live at right now. They said when he was rolling, he had $20 million. He's now in a wheelchair. Everywhere I see him, I was like, wow. The thing is, the Bible says you can scam. It won't last. You can steal, you can, you can flock and do all these things, it won't last. But it says, the man that works steadily and builds, he will keep what God has given him. You don't have to rush to success. Take your time. You 19, you 20, take your time. One day you won't be 40 and God will look at you and he gonna double you up. Take your time and progress the way that God has you going. Don't rush and try to get the Mercedes at 22. What you doing with a Louis Vuitton purse at 22? Why are you walking around with $800 shoes at 22? You ain't got nothing to say that you should have that at this age. Take your time. Let God progress you and build you so that when you get there, you can keep it. It's nothing worse. I remember in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the drug dealers get all their money and they got all their houses and the FBI kick the door in. Take it all away. It all goes to naught. So God says, take your time. Don't be in a rush. Don't follow your friends who, look, look I'm scamming. I, I got the new Jordan. I got this and that. Just look, say, that's all right. I'm going to go right to Taco Bell. I'm going to work. You going to work at Taco Bell? You going to work at Walmart? Yeah. Because I'm going to do it the right way. Be patient, do it the right way. You can keep it. Go get your education, do it the right way. Progress and God will bless you along the way. Because fast money goes fast and it leads to a fast death or fast prison sentence. I don't know anybody, I'm 53 years old, all the high rollers, gone, all, all. I had a friend, he lasted 27 years. They caught him three years ago. He got 30 years now. So he's my age and he's about to do 30 years. He ain't getting out till he's 80 because it's fed time. You're going to do every minute. You can't beat the game. So don't let the devil tempt you and trick you. Take your time and let God do it the right way. And the very last thing. Turn with me next. Turn with me next. It's Isaiah 58 and 13. Isaiah 58 and 13. Lord, I want more. Isaiah 58 and 13. Lord, I want to be blessed. Isaiah 58, 13. It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy great pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a, a day of delight, the Holy Lord, honorable, shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. I'm going to translate this. Verse 14. Then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. I will feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Let me translate this. This is simply talking about going to church. What? Isaiah 58, 13 through 14. Let me read from the Living Bible Translate. It says, if you keep the, hope, the Sabbath day and have fun on God's day and conduct business on God's day, not enjoying the Sabbath day, it will not be a delight to the Lord. 
if you take God's day, you say, this is Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day, I remember, this started probably about 10 years ago. Sunday fun day, everybody posting pictures. Sunday fun, we at the beach, we brunching, we doing all these things. And the devil like, I got cancer, I got some bullets for you, I got some rape for you, I'm going to take your kid, I'm going to take your, and you don't realize, while you're doing Sunday fun day, the devil is just over there plotting on you. Because you don't have God's protection. But if you honor God on his day, he says you will be blessed. God will cover you. He will protect you. This is God's word. You can read it, Isaiah 58, 13 through 14. God will cover you. He will protect you. He says you will have delight. You will have pleasure. I want God to look down upon me and say, you know what? I saw Michael in church. Now, Michael is a straight fool, but he went to church. He read his Bible. He's blessed. But if you don't do that, now you working with the devil. And Satan don't play fair because he don't like you. It's nothing worse when you got to get punished by somebody who don't like you and can't stand you. Because he's coming for you to destroy you with everything that he has. So God says, go to church. That's the simple. If you want to get blessed, go to church. My mama, my mama. Uh, I grew up, she, this is Arkadelphia, Arkansas. She worked for Levi. This was back in the 70s. She made $1.48 an hour. $1.48 an hour. We never went without food. We always had somewhere to live. She always had a new car. She made $1.48 per hour. And we always had everything that we need. She buried one child, and then she buried two grandchildren. She never stopped serving God. She made $1.48. If God can prosper her with $1.48 per hour, what can he do with you in the land of wealth in Los Angeles? He can bless you immensely. But it starts with me saying, you know what, God, I'm going to church. I'm going to focus. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do, you know what, God, I'm going to test you. I'm going to do what this Bible says. Test God and see if he won't bless you. Like I said, if you trust God, he will bless you immensely. It's interesting, we have Deacon Norman's grandson here. Deacon Norman lived a full, 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 full life. If, if I get to where Deacon Norman, I will thank God. If you're going to give me 80 plus years, I'm going to thank God every day. He watched his children grow and do amazing things. He watched his grandchildren grow and do an amazing thing because he was faithful to God and he was faithful to God's word. If you're faithful to God's word, God will bless you immensely. But if you choose to follow your friends, if you choose to follow the ways of the world, if you choose to follow your grandparents and you choose to follow your mama, you see where they at, that's where you will be at. God ain't playing. He said, he said it right here. He says, trust me or trust the devil. The Bible says, God says this, he says, you love trust in my fact, turn to John, 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 chapter 8. I want you to see what Jesus said. Go to the book of John. Go to the book of John. Go to John chapter 8, verse 45. John chapter 8, verse 45. Matter of fact, let's start with verse 44. It says, ye are of the Father, the devil, and lust after your fathers as ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh, he speaketh a lie, and he speaketh of his own, for Satan is a liar, and the father of him. Verse 45, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. This is Jesus speaking, and he says the sad reality is, you won't trust me. You don't trust this Bible. You trust YouTube. You trust uh, all these people with all these different made up religions. You trust everything that people got to say and you following them. And God said, when I tell you the truth, you say it's a lie. God said, if you trust me, he will bless you. But if you trust men, you'll be cursed. It's so sad that YouTube misleads a whole lot of black men and got them following false gods and false leaders. And uh, that's the white man God. I ain't going to your church. I'm, I'm gonna follow this brother over here. We gonna stand on the color, on the corner, and beat a drum because that's the real God. And the devil just leading them down the path that leads to destruction. God says, "Test me, trust me, because I'm telling you the truth. If you put God first, He will bless you immensely." Matter of fact, turn to Jeremiah 2 and 13. We're almost done. Jeremiah 2 and 13. 
And these are great scriptures, Jeremiah 2 and 13. Jeremiah 2 and 13. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 2 and 13. Jeremiah 2 and 13 says this. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed out cisterns and broken cisterns that can hold no water. Put a pin in that. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of the living water, and hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Put a pin in that. Turn with me to John 4 and 10. We're going to put that together. John 4 and 10. John 4 and 10. John 4 and 10. Well, we'll be done after this. John 4 and 10. God says, we have created, we, we say that God ain't real, and then we create our own gods. John 4 and 10. John 4 and 10. If you guys say amen, ain't got the head. John 4 and 10. John 4 and 10 says this. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee the living water. All right, so we saw in two instances where God says, I am the living water. Jesus says, I am the living water. Jeremiah 2.13, John 4.10. Jesus said the same thing. I am the living water. I want you to think about this. Your body is what? 70% water. Jesus says, I am the living water. So if you don't serve Jesus, then the water that's in your body is not living. Jesus says, serve me. Come to church. Find me. Read your Bible. Tithe. Pray, be good to people, and now you found the living water. If you don't follow God, the water that most of your body consists of is not living. And he says, now, since your body is not living, you'll be thirsty. That's why people on Instagram, thirsty. That's why you walk through the mall, thirsty. Got to have the newest and the finest everything, thirsty. Never satisfied with nothing thirsty because you don't have God. God's not in you and because God's not in you, you're not living. But when God gets inside of you, you become content. You find peace. You don't. You say, God, I'm good whether I'm high, I'm good whether I'm low. God, I'm good because I woke up this morning. I saw somebody this morning in school and they said, how you doing, Mr. H? I said, I'm good. They said, why are you good? I said, because I'm here. Because I got to go to four fuels this week. I'm so glad to be here. I thank God that I'm here. I'm good that I'm here. If God see you content, he'll bless you. Jesus Christ is the living water. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Without him, you will have no life. Without him, you will have no living water. You don't want to be thirsty all the time. You don't want to go through Instagram always thirsty. Oh, I got to go here because my life ain't nothing. I got to drink this because I hate my life. I got to smoke. You don't want to be thirsty. You want to always be full so that God can provide you with everything that you need. Uh, last day, turn to uh, uh, John 4, 14, 6. We right there in John anyway. John 14, 6. John 14 and 6. John 14 and 6. And I'm giving you these scriptures because you're going to have to talk to all kinds of crazy people with all kinds of fake religions. John 14 and 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way you get into heaven is through Jesus. It's so sad. I, I go, unfortunately, I go to funerals. I got four this week. And I go to these funerals. And everybody go to heaven. You ain't never been to the funeral. And the pastor jumped that day. I know he in hell right now. I, know, I ain't never heard that before. Uh, I know he got his wings. They start all that. He looking down upon me. And he's up there with the Lord. Yeah, we all say that. But if they don't know Jesus. They're not with the Lord. Because Jesus is the way. He's the one standing at the door to open the gates. 
or he's the one that says, depart. I don't know you. So if you don't know Jesus, you won't know heaven. But, but that's the white man God who told you that. Uh, but Jesus is the white man God who told you that. Stop believing what the devil has said. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is God. There's no way around it. And anybody else that's not saying that is leading you down a false path that's going to lead you to destruction. So it's very simple. If you want to be blessed, follow Christ. If you want to be blessed, work hard. If you want to be blessed, read your Bible. If you want to be blessed, go to church. If you want to be blessed, be good to other people. Do not follow the ways of the world. Because if you watch the news tonight, you're going to hear about murders. you hear about deaths. you hear about fi fires and all kind of craziness. That's the way of the world. But when you delve into God's word, he'll say, you can go through the valley of the shadow of death, but fear no evil, for I'll be with you. God will walk with you. I walked down some dark alley last night at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm on the beach. Just me. Riding in the dark. Just me. But I wasn't alone because God had an angel that was before me. He had an angel that was behind me. He had an angel that was on both sides of me. He had an angel that was above me. He had an angel that was beneath me. And the Holy Spirit was in me to guide me. See, when you roll with God, you're never alone. The enemy wants to tell you, you by yourself, you ain't going to make it. The devil's alive because you're never alone. If Jesus Christ be for you, nothing can be against you. Young people, you're going to overcome and do great things because God is going to be with you. He's going to make sure that you're not going to fail. See, the thing is, you're God's advertisement piece. God uses you to advertise. He used me, a failed father, a failed husband, a failed teacher, a failed accountant, got kicked out of college twice. He used me to say, if this man could stand before you, you can do anything. Because I am the epitome of failure. But God take a failure. He says, I'm going to make you a success. He says, oh, your church been going eight years. We're going to make sure it goes another 20 years. So give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. So that these young people can have a place to go serve God in their truth. God loves you. So keep serving him with everything that you have. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody's good. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, God. At your age, you have doubt. And that's okay. At your age, some of you think it won't get better and I'm not where I want to be. But what you need to understand is that God sees you. And if you want to be blessed, all he's telling you is work a little harder. Work a little harder. It's crazy. I'm sitting at work today. And I didn't have much to do because they got me on like semi-retirement. So I was like, wow. But I remember when I was at Compton High. And I get there late, 8.15, 8.20. I wouldn't leave to 8.20, 8.30 at night. I would do this five Sometimes six days a week. My wife be the fuck. Why are you up there? The tutoring people, helping people, dropping people off, people, all kind of crazy things. God sees your work. And what he's going to do is he's going to multiply it on the other side. So you have to be faithful right now. While you're young, your job right now is to struggle. Work as hard as you can. Guess what? At this age, you're the strongest you're ever going to be for the rest of your life. I want you to think about this. I'm 53. I am not strong. Bishop could knock me out anytime he wanted to. I'm 53. I'm an old man. I, you know, I can talk. Like, yeah, I'm a bitch. But I ain't got much wind no more. Amen. That's why Mayweather, the best fighter, had to retire because he's old now. You're the strongest you're ever going to be. So don't let the, that's why the thing we talk about the weed smoking, you don't know my weed, yo, because you don't smoke. No, because the enemy is tricky. Satan is clever. Remember, Satan is a genius. 
and he'll trick you. I've watched it happen. I've watched people smoke weed for 20 years. Now they're 30, 40 years old and have nothing. Look in their rear view. They have nothing because the enemy stole their youth. Get high, little sex, little food, kick back, little job here. Next thing you know, you have nothing. So say, God, help me break this thing so I can focus. You can't have anything that alters your mind because now you can't focus. It, it, it's like this. You driving high, you can't focus on the road. You driving drunk, you can't focus on the road. So how can you focus on the career? How can you focus on your family? How can you focus on your future if you're intoxicated all the time? Because what happens is, <laughs> and there you go, everything funny, and the devil laughing with you. <laughs> Hell yeah, keep going. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> the devil is a liar. So this year, 2023, say, God, help me to break it. And it won't start overnight. Some of y'all smoke three, four times a day. Say, God, help me to get down to twice a day. Lord, help me to get it down to three days a week. Next thing you know, you only be smoking weed once a week. And then after a while, you won't need it at all. God can do that for you. How do I know this? I, I, have, a, I have a family member, can't say his name because he watching. He was on crack. I'll leave it at that. He was a crackhead all the way to life. Crackhead. Today, he's drug free. And it's not because the, the miraculous God came out of the sky, him upside the head. He started one day at a time. I have another friend. I can talk about him, but he don't watch. Uh, he's an alcoholic. When I say he was an alcoholic, he's from Compton. He, he literally, he's right, uh, he's right on the other side of the century. He's right on the same street, other side of the century. He was an alcoholic up until he was 38 years old. He used to get so drunk. He said one time he crashed into somebody's house over there in Fruit Town. Crashed into their house in Fruit Town. The people came out their house, beat him up. He woke up in jail, all beat up. No, first he was in the hospital, all beat up. He didn't know how he got there. He didn't know what happened. And he said, and this guy, Bishop Men, he is a genius. When I say genius, Genius. Genius. When I say genius, he's now 60 years old. And he said, Lord, I'm tired of this. So what he did was he got into a program and he said, Lord, I'm going to do this one day at a time. And today he's been sober 28 years. And he did it not because it was him. God working through him. And he said, Mike, every day I struggle. He said, you don't ever get rid of an addiction. You don't lose an addiction. I, I still believe I'm a Scorpio. I struggle with Scorpio things. Sex and women. Yeah, I, I'm in trouble all the time. But you don't ever lose it. My favorite pastor, my favorite pastor, this one I got saved by Bishop Omer. He was addicted to pornography. When I say addicted, he used to go to the pornography house every day. He was saved, going in there, watching the porn and doing whatever people do. Uh, before social media and, and these what these phones and all that, you used to have to actually go to the sex houses. There was no no phone. You had to go there and go in there. It was up and down Hollywood Boulevard on Sunset. All over the place. And he said one day he started crying. God, can you help me with this thing? Today he's been away from that thing for 40 years. But he says every day, he's 75, he says he still struggles with it. You will never lose the addiction. You just ask God to help you manage it. So that it doesn't control you. And the thing, once you do that, God can bless you and manifest you and take you up. And the last thing, right now you broke. You won't be broke in five years. You won't be broke in two years. You won't be broke in one year. Some of you, your car is coming. Your apartment is coming. Your house is coming. Your retirement is coming. Your college degree is coming. The thing that you ask for is coming. But you got to be patient and work. Be patient. Do the work. You don't want God to give you something overnight, something that you ain't ready for. 
Uh, learn from MC Hammer. MC Hammer became the number one selling rapper of all time before Eminem and all that. He was the nobody has ever sold more than you can't touch this. And he lost it all because he got it all at one time and he couldn't manage it. He had 30 cars. Sounds fun until you gotta pay 30 car insurances. Till you gotta fill up a car 30 times. One car has four tires. That's 120 tires. All that sounded good till you had 30 oil changes. And he didn't realize that all the money, see, it sounds good. Big old mansion? Big mansion means you gotta have somebody take care of that thing. So the thing is, you want God to help you to go and grow into your blessings. So when you get it, you can keep it and build slow. Pastor Alupiki said this, go slow, be show. That's his thing. Go slow, be show. Because if you go slow, you can grow and you can keep it for sure. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Anybody have any words when we go to Amen. Everybody grab a hand. Grab a hand. Amen. By here, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that went forth. We thank you for all these young people. We thank you, Father, for their amazing gifts. We thank you, Father, for their faith. Father, you know their faith. Some of them have faith of a mustard seed. Bless it. Some of them have great best faith. Bless them. Father, some of them are standing here at the knee. They're, they don't have enough money in their gas right now. They don't have enough money in their pocket, Father. Bless them. Cover them indeed. Cover their homes. Cover their, their families, Father. Continue to strengthen them. Cover their mind. Protect them, Father, from doubt, the spirit of doubt and fear. Give them, Father, a spirit of faith, a spirit of courage and strength. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity into that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. That these young people come to hand and not to tell. That they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We bind drunk drivers, Father. We bind men walking around shooting guns aimlessly, Father. We bind men that want to beat these ladies, Father. We bind men that want to abuse these young children, Father. We bind anything that's not of you, Father. And we speak life, health, prosperity, long life, strength, and wisdom.